iPhone X is the most anticipated gadget since, well, the first iPhone. But now that it's here, let's bring the hype back to reality. I'm Jeff Fowler, the Post New Tech Guy. And what you need to know about the iPhone X is it offers you some things you're really gonna want, like this big screen and a small body. Hey, it can turn your head into one of these. But the iPhone X also takes away some things you know and are really gonna miss. Most notably, the trusty home button. It's like you went trick or treating and Apple was offering full size peppermint patties. Score! But then they said, oh, you can't have one unless you give up the full size Snickers you already have. Oh, and then Apple said, give me an extra $200 because with a starting price of a thousand bucks, this is the most expensive iPhone ever. Is it a trick or a treat? After living with an iPhone 10 for a bit, I can give you two good reasons to get one and also two good reasons to skip it. This screen is reason number one I'm buying one. It's not just higher resolution. They squeezed a plus size screen into a much smaller form by nipping and tucking the iPhone's forehead and chin. Okay, they forgot to snip out this notch area here. And to be sure, Apple didn't invent this all screen idea. I'm certain iPhone lovers will be happy you no longer need giant hands to get the large screen you crave for texting or whatever it is you stay up at night doing on your phone. Does all glass make it more fragile? That is a concern, but Apple claims it's the hardest glass ever put into a phone. Reason number two is the battery. Does anybody have a charger I could borrow? Chances are you'll say that a lot less with the iPhone 10. Apple says the battery lasts about two hours longer than the iPhone 7 or 8. Let that sink in. It's the biggest battery leap I've seen from a phone in years. So let's talk about two reasons to hold off. Reason number one, face ID. You unlock the iPhone 10 with your face, not your thumbprint. They call it face ID, and you have to actually line it up just the right distance from your face, like you're taking a selfie, and then swipe up. It works, at least with my face, nine times out of 10. It worked in the dark, with sunglasses, but not when I wore a mustache. You can bet I'm gonna keep testing this. But it's not actually any faster than using a finger, and it's often more awkward. Could you imagine doing this during a meeting? Oh, don't mind me, I'm just unlocking my phone. The Face ID cameras and sensors also power these so-called Animojis, and maybe some stuff we haven't even thought of yet. What really stinks is that Apple's forcing you to use your face by killing the fingerprint option. Leading Android phones offer both. And let's end on the biggest bummer of all. They not only took away the fingerprint reader, they took away the whole button. So how do you use this thing? It's like teaching fingers to cha-cha, but less fun. To close an app, now you do this. To get to the control center, you have to swipe not there, just right there. To summon Siri, you tap on what used to be the power button? Yeah, that's right. I'm sure I'll get used to it eventually, but first I have to forget 10 years of muscle memory created by Apple's own iPhone. Apple's big idea with the iPhone 10 is to take away as much as possible so that there's nothing in between you and the information you want to get. But if you're going to buy one today, you have to be prepared to say goodbye to some things that you know.